All right, man, here we are, down at the 2018 Tacoma Guitar Festival, right, man? Is it called yeah. the festival? What happened to the Vintage Guitar Show? Well, anyway, so we're down here, we came down with uh, eight guitars, uh, not to sell, but just to kind of show off a little bit. And then he came down to buy some guitars today and just kind of poked down, hang out with a bunch of our friends down here. Uh, it's just getting kicked up, it's about 10.30, right? Yeah, 10, it feels like it's 10 yeah. p.m. right now. So we've, uh, yeah, we've already bought probably a dozen guitars and some really cool amps to take back to Emerald City Guitars for the showroom for all you customers around the world that are fans of our shop. Um, what do you got, Trev? Hanging. I'm, look, I'm, look at, coffee, I know, I know. I'm looking around for <laughs> all the weird odds. I've bought a con tuner. Uh, saw Paul Reed Smith walk around. John 5 is supposed to be yeah. playing. We saw a lot of John 4s and 6s, but yeah, no man. 5 yet. Yeah, and, uh, it's good. It's, there's our, some funky our buddy, stuff. Our buddy James oh. Schultz uh, turned us on to this controversial hat here, which I haven't worn it yet, but who knows, man. Make Gibson great again. Let's hope. Uh, a lot of so, yeah. swag at these shows now. Yeah, T-shirts. Uh, and, yeah. <laughs> all right, let's go find some shit. So we usually go to these guitar shows and take 50 guitars and set up a big old booth and you know exhibit our wares and, and trade and buy and sell. But uh, in the last few years, there hasn't been a lot of uh, selling going on at shows like that. And uh, my goal was to go in and look for 12 to 15 affordable guitars. And by that, I mean guitars less than $2,000. And so we hung out for a few hours, had some fun, said hi to all our old buddies down there and uh, came back with some cool stuff. So I'm just going to give you a little rundown here. Uh, starting here to my left, uh, we've got a cool little conqueror right here, which is kind of a hummingbird copy from Japan in the 70s. The always cool little silver tone tube combo, and that's an early one. You can see the big wooden handle on it. This is one I was really excited about here. This is a 60s Echo, so an Italian-made guitar. Cool arch top with three pickups in it, and. Uh, just a neat piece, man. Next to that, the always popular Fender Lead 2 from the 80s. Uh, of course, the little Tysco, cool Japanese, affordable, funky guitar. Sold one of those to Ryan Adams a few years ago and he fell in love with it. So I'm playing it on a video somewhere. Uh, this is one I kind of was jazzed to get right there. And that's a 60s Gaia Tone four pickup model with a tremolo and all the blender switches. And uh, I see that guitar and I see Hound Dog Taylor, man, the famous blues guitarist with the sixth finger. Continuing, got a cool 40th anniversary Strat, just a real meat and potatoes guitar. Behind that, uh, we have a, a Les Paul uh, Studio, always popular, affordable USA Gibson electric guitar. That one's got the P90s in it. Right next to that, a 73 SG Custom. Haven't had a Custom in here for a while, so that was really cool to see in the awesome walnut finish. And right next to that, guys, a, a late 69, early 70s SG Standard, and that's a really cool guitar. Uh, right here is a very interesting guitar. This is called a Session Rocker, and it's one of the coolest Rickenbacker copies I've seen. And, uh, I saw it and I thought it was a Rickenbacker. I'm like, oh, cool, a Fireglow Rickenbacker 330, but no, it's a Session Rocker. Um, behind this, Japanese Mako guitar, just a solid two or three hundred dollar guitar, very Strat-like in appearance, a couple of humbuckers in it. Uh, really cool Firebird behind this guy here in the Alpine White. Uh, this is a very interesting guitar that I haven't really dug in too much, but uh, I, I got a really good deal on it. It's a solid mahogany. It reminds me of a, a little early Martin or Gibson. Uh, something made probably on the East Coast, but we'll dig into that a little more. Uh, always good to jump on these old Yamahas. That's a guitar you can sell for a couple hundred bucks and people eat those up. Cool little Dan Electro right here from the 50s. Like that little tube amp. That sounds great. Uh, and then Right over here, that's a little gem. I found a 1922 Martin 2-17, so a solid mahogany little parlor guitar, and that one sounds awesome. And right next to that, equally as cool and from the same era, a Lion and Healy. And this guitar, and I sat and played that all day yesterday, and it just sounds great. It's very ornate, and it comes equipped with a cool pickup unit that was installed um, by Eric Daw at some point. 
Behind that, just a real cool little flip top national amp from the 50s. And I saw that, it reminded me of the old Gibson EH-185 amps, the flip top where you flip the top, pull the amp out, and, and basically you got a piggyback there. So uh, yeah, that was fun, man. Went in for a couple hours, had some fun, got in and out, we were able to just enjoy the weekend off, and uh, here we are Monday morning, back into action. So these will all be spiffed up, set up, priced, authenticated, and you'll be seeing them on our website. So stay tuned, you guys.